sometimes these things are actually good for us to walk in faith because what happens is we realize we still have a long way to go and we need to depend on God. Mm. We need to depend on him daily. Hey everyone, hopefully you're doing well. Welcome to the Jesus King podcast. I'm back with Abraham. How yeah. you doing, Abraham? I'm good, man. It's always good to be here. It's good Love to it. be with you as well, man. Yeah. Uh, what we're doing today, we're actually doing, uh, well, in the next three videos, yeah. we're doing a three-part video. And it is to do with walking in the Spirit, mm -hmm. the fruit of the Spirit, and sowing and reaping in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's obviously based on uh, the second half of Galatians, chapter yeah. five, and the beginning of chapter six. Mm -hmm. So in this part, we want to speak about walking in the Spirit. Yeah. Yeah. And before we get into the topic, we just want to explain it. Yeah. So to you, what would be what is walking in the spirit? Yeah, I think this is um it's a very it's an important thing because we we have certain ideas that are a little a little counterintuitive to walking in the spirit. So there are for example, like you know, we grew up in a fairly charismatic kind of upbringing and there were certain um ideas where like you know it was tailored to um, sinless perfectionism or something like this where it's like well in order to walk in the spirit you have to be free from all sin and you have to work really hard to have no sin in you and to obey law and and it actually does the opposite it actually mm -hmm. it actually brings up in us a a lawlessness and it actually like starts provoking our desires to do sin um and then you have like a liberalism which is the opposite end so you have like legalism on one end and li liberalism on the other where you're looking at all right well um well we're saved and the grace of the lord is great so we can just kind of freely indulge in um in the lusts of the flesh or whatnot, and we're going to be saved anyway, so it's okay. And both of those are very dangerous, and both of those lead to the same place of death by the flesh. Um, but walking in the Spirit is is part of that new life that Christ has brought. And so this is where we look at what Christ has done on the cross. He has come that we may have a new nature. We put on your new self, right? So before Christ... We are in the flesh. Before Christ, our spirit is dead. We don't have the ability to commune with God in a sense of true um, spirit and true worship because our spirit is disconnected from God. Um, Jesus speaks about this in John chapter 4. He says, he's talking to the woman at the well, and it's on the topic of worship. And Jesus says, um, a day will come where those who worship me will worship me in spirit and in truth, right? And that's pretty much the reason that Christ came. He came that we may be able to worship God in spirit and in truth, and that requires a new identity, a new self in the spirit. So the flesh needs to disintegrate, the flesh needs to be crucified, and the spirit, the spiritual nature needs to come alive, right? So walking in the spirit requires that my spirit is alive, all right, cool, cool. Yeah. And, and and what would you think, like Paul would be using the word walking? Mm. Like it, it, it's it's a journey, would you say? Or yeah, well, it... well. So this is another aspect of it. You have when it's talking about the the flesh, and you, we're gonna we're gonna read through the passage. But when it talks about the flesh, it talks about the works of the flesh. Mm -hmm. And then when you talk about the spirit, it's talking about walking in the spirit. The works of the flesh are things that you are working towards. Like you, you're, you're trying, you're trying to earn the favor of God. You're trying to earn the favor of men through your own passions and through your own gratification of the flesh. Whereas with the spirit, it's talking about walking with the spirit, and it kind of alludes to you know that Psalm twenty three: "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not want. He leads me by still waters. He leads me to green pastures." And so it is this journey in which the Spirit is guiding us and leading us and and um, bringing to knowledge the things that he has, um, he has declared in Scripture. And so in Colossians chapter 3, where it talks about that new nature, in Colossians 3, it says, um, 
in order that the new nature may be eminent, in order that the new nature might really be full in your life, you need to allow the word of Christ to dwell richly in you. Right? And so when the word of Christ is dwelling richly in us, then what happens is the spirit who's leading us brings that into our daily life. And so, yes, there is this journey. We are walking. We are we are step by step moving from glory to glory, faith to faith. And so sometimes when a Christian has a bad day, we're like, man, I just I, I, I really didn't walk in the spirit today. It's OK, because there's this journey of sanctification and Tomorrow, the Spirit will bring to remembrance where you are lacking today. Oh, nice! And you will you will grow. You will grow in a in a. I, I'm going to learn from my mistake yesterday. I lost my temper. <laughs> you know, I, I I did things that were counter. And, and I've experienced this, and I think I experienced it yesterday. You know, in dealings with my wife and whatnot. And you're like, I lost it here. But God is so gracious and the spirit is gracious. And this walking in the spirit is like the spirit is there just reminding us and leading us in the convictions of the spirit of God, in the convictions of the word of God as well. So it's really a beautiful journey there. Nice. It it feels like walking in the spirit is walking away from the works of the flesh. Absolutely. So the more you walk in the spirit, the more you're not you're not going to gratify or satisfy the mm. the love and the lust of the flesh. Mm-hmm. And I think as Christians, sometimes we fight sin mm-hmm. as fighting sin. Um, and I see here Paul saying, well, if you walk in the spirit, you're not going to give any space for sin. Yeah. Let's let's so, actually, do you want to actually read it? Yeah. Because yeah. I think, I think it will actually, it's really beautiful the way that Paul kind of structures it. He, he starts here. So in the book of Galatians, Paul is talking about this tension between the flesh and the spirit. Um, but he's also speaking about it as a tension between the law and the spirit, right? So the law, obedience to the law in trying to earn the favor of God actually produces the works of the flesh. If you don't have the mind of Christ, if you don't have a new spiritual nature. So Paul is saying to the people who are trying to earn God's favor and earn their salvation through the law, he's saying, that's that's going to do the exact opposite of what Christ came for. And so he starts to talk about walking by the Spirit rather than walking in the law and in your own strength to earn God's favor. And so then in verse 16, so Galatians chapter 5, verse 16, um, he says, But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not carry out the desire of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, for these are in opposition to one another, so that you may not do the things that you please. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So there you go. So it's like the law now has no power over the members of your flesh. Like the the law used to provoke our flesh to sin because we didn't have the ability to do good. right? But now we're not under the law because the spirit is leading us and leading us in truth and leading us into true worship, right? And then in verse 19, But the deeds of the flesh are evident, which are immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousies, outbursts of anger, disputes, dissensions, factions, envying, drunkenness, carousing, and things like these, of which I have warned you, just as I have forewarned, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Right, and so you see that tension, the sp- walking in the spirit and the works of the flesh, and those two things exist because we are in a fallen world, because you know, thanks to Adam and Eve, <laughs> we yeah. we we've um through through disobedience we've allowed sin to corrupt the creation of God, and so now what's happened is we were born into a world that is fallen. And our nature is that which is predisposed to sin. So, you know, you have a, a one or a two-year-old kid. You already know that he's already predisposed to doing things that are not good. Yeah. Th- there's that corruption in there. We teach them what's right. We don't teach them what's wrong. You don't have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they, yeah, it's they know the that it's in the nature. Yeah. So, so one of the things in Christian doctrine is you connect will to nature, right? So you have two natures now as a Christian. You have... A fleshly nature 
a sinful nature, and then you have a spiritual nature. And will is connected to each. So now we have a flesh nature, which is destroyed by the work of Christ, but still exists while we are on earth. And that has a will. and But we also have a spiritual nature, which has eminence and strength and power in our lives because of the work of Jesus, and that has a will as well. So we have these two wills all right, that are warring against one another, and they are against one another, and they are opposed to one another. And so one of the things, and especially in, in the, the teachings of Paul and Peter, where it's talking about giving eminence and giving strength to the Spirit by walking in the Spirit. So your spiritual nature, giving that the the opportunity to grow through the denying of the flesh and through the walking with God, right? And so we talk about the spiritual disciplines of prayer and studying of God's word and devotion as being the thing that is going to control the appetites of the flesh. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that can lead to a question where people would, read the works of the flesh mm -hmm. which we just read right now yeah and they might think like tick 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 and there might be one that be like oh that's a struggle for me yeah yeah so if someone has one of those struggles would that be a sign of saying i'm completely not walking in the spirit or i'm not or, saved yeah, yeah as yeah. it says like you're not going to inherit the kingdom mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so how would you reconcile that? Would that be something in the area of sanctification or or yeah. what would it be? Th that's been a very big misconception as well. Like this is one of the reasons why the Reformation was a really good thing because what happened in the Reformation is the doctrine of justification and the doctrine of sanctification were ironed out. Justification means how we are saved. Sanctification means how we are living in this fallen world as a saved person, all right? So when you're justified, you are saved completely. You are sealed and you are given a new nature by the work of Jesus. Sanctification is that conformity, being conformed to the image of Christ. And so there are, there are people, some of you that may be viewing this are like, man, like I'm not lusting anymore, but dude, I have a temper, right? Mm. So like God's completely rid this area of sin in my life and you know, I don't even have an issue here, but I have issue here, all right? That's all part of parcel of sanctification, that, that the Spirit is leading you into truth day by day because He understands the, the limited nature of our being. He, he understands that it's not going to be like in one fell swoop because sometimes, and I'm going to use this carefully, I want to say this carefully, sometimes these things are actually good for us to walk in faith, because what happens is we realize we still have a long way to go and we need to depend on God. Mm. We need to depend on Him daily. I, you know, I've battled this through the power of the Spirit and I've overcome it, but there's still more. And there's still more to go before I'm conformed fully to the image of God. And this is where Romans 1, 17 talks about the just living by faith. That I am justified and I am continually living by faith in order to be sanctified and conform to the image of Christ. So for those of you who are struggling to, to master this one area in your life, that's where the, the Spirit is leading and guiding and teaching you how to subdue the flesh and subjugate it under the Spirit. Um, but it also says, if you walk in the flesh, you will not gratify the desire. So you will not be, be sold into this thing. So... Whereas the works of the flesh, that was your identity before. Before Christ, that was your identity. That's who you were. And what you've done. And what you've done, time. right? Yeah. So you are a sinful person. You have a sinful nature. You're sold under sin. You have no choice but to fulfill these works. It's in your nature. Now, that's not the case. You have the remnant of the flesh because we live in a fallen world and we have the, the remnant of it, but we are no longer subjugated by it. We are no longer under the dominion of it. We walk in the Spirit, and so that gives us the power to say no. Did you have the power to say no to the things of the flesh before you came to Christ? Oh, no. not really. And to be honest with you, it wasn't just the power to say no. Mm. There was no reason for me to say no. Yeah. I mean, what, uh, because there was no war in me mm. that says this is good, this is bad. It was just like, live the way you want, whether yeah. it is good or bad in your eyes. 
whatever suit you best yeah. yeah do that do that in your life and something that reminded me as we were talking about recognizing our sinfulness and recognizing our shortcomings and coming to God with that that reminds me of Jesus words in Matthew 5 mm-hmm. he said blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom Amen. of God yeah. so it kingdom of heaven so here he speaks about those people who do the things of the flesh will not inherit the kingdom of mm-hmm. heaven but those who recognize their poverty that they can't offer anything spiritually to God theirs is the kingdom of God Amen. to Amen. i think that's very important as christians because w- these works of the flesh create pride in us mm-hmm. which means we don't need god yep. because what we do can be sufficient enough in our life to get what we want yep. Yep. but in christianity it's the other way around there's no life without humility Mm-hmm. because in humility we can draw close to god mm-hmm. and we can come to god and he will give us everlasting life yeah i think that's important as christians is sometimes we think about walking in the spirit and walking in the flesh is simple as black and white yeah. and i agree like it is black and white you walk in the spirit you're not doing the things of the flesh yeah. Yeah. if you're doing the works of the flesh you're not walking in the spirit but we need to understand that sometimes we do take detours sometimes we go through seasons in our life where we're that disobedient child yeah and god is taking us through a process mm-hmm. and sometimes that can be sanctifying we can learn a lot from it yeah. Yeah. um often we see someone who might backslide we say oh lost cause that's it done he's finished. done yeah. Um, apostate <laughs> yeah don't worry about them they already know the bible they've been to church before and so on but sometimes we don't know that god is taking them through a journey mm. and god is bringing them back and we don't want to make that mistake of the older brother yeah when he saw his younger brother come back the father embraced him mm-hmm. but the older brother complained we don't want to be that we want to be like the father yeah if the father embraces a person we need to embrace that person as well. Yeah. So as much as we want to encourage people to be walking in the spirit and we always need to call people to walk in the spirit is that if someone is doing the works of the flesh we need to be there mm-hmm. to say let's get out of that. Yeah. Let's cleanse ourselves from it. Yeah. Because in James chapter 1 he speaks about the reason why there is temptation is because there's a desire that's right yeah, yeah. if we can eliminate the desire we can help people not to do these works of the flesh and as well as us yeah but you mentioned something and that caught my eye you were talking about you know you you had a moment yesterday mm-hmm. how would you encourage people because we spoke about walking in the spirit yeah, yeah. and what our responsibilities are how would you encourage family members like a family or a group of Christians friends or it might be even like a congregation together to walk in the spirit together yeah because the works of the flesh it shows that all these things envy lust mm-hmm. pride heresies and so on are to do with each other right it's relational yep. with other people so how can we be relational in regards to walking in the spirit. Yeah, I think I think I've shared this um analogy and illustration in another um episode. But um yeah, generally what happens is we have a source of truth and that source flows out into our daily actions. So for example, our source of truth as a believer is God. He is the source of truth, he is the source of all that is good, he is the source of all um beauty in righteousness. when we dwell in that presence that flows out and we're going to talk about this maybe in the third session as well you know sowing what you reap yeah. and what not but I'll touch on it here when we spend that time with God in God dwelling in his presence automatically and naturally flows out the fruit right that love and that joy rather than malice and wickedness and jealousy and anger and envy which generally can come right on a on a daily basis when we have our minds on our own selfish desires and selfish needs we are looking at another person as being the barrier between what i want right in the flesh and that person standing in the way 
right? So for example, I have these ambitions and desires in life, but this person who I'm, let's say I'm married to, or let's say they're my kids or, or a colleague or whatever, they're standing in the way of my happiness mm. in the flesh, right? Instead of seeing it in the mind of Christ, that that is a person that God came on to this earth for and died for, all right? And he has so much love for them that in the same way, I need to have such a love for them and selflessly give of myself to them. Mm. Now, imagine you have a family who are all sold out to that truth, that they need to selflessly give to one another. Imagine that family unit. That would be a beautiful family where they're selflessly giving, making sure everybody's needs are being met, making sure they're caring for one another and taking care. That's a picture of what the church should be, right? But it's also what a picture of your family unit as soul to Christ should be. We all have the mind of Christ where we are not looking to our own needs, but to their needs. And in that, all of our needs are being met. Right? Amen. Oh, well, that, that's great. So having the mind of Christ helps us you, you're not united yeah. to actually follow Christ and walk in the spirit yeah. together. That's very important. Uh, like, remember, I, I was using that analogy before about the triangle, right? Yeah. So you have God at the top and then you have us on either end and the closer we get to god the closer, the closer we get to each wow. other nice. and so i've used that one before and i always love that mm-hmm. because sometimes when my wife and i feel like we're not in sync and we're not really you know well let's say me i've had a rough day or whatnot and i feel like you know everything she's doing is going to annoy me right and everything i do is going to annoy her and we're not in sync both of us need to clear our own hearts and come to god that way we can bless one another rather than be curses or, or show anger or whatnot. Same thing with my kids. My kids don't know any better. They're still growing. I know better. So I know I need to get my heart right. I need to come to God, ask Him to give me that peace so that I can flow that into their lives. Amen. Yeah. Well, there's a lot more to talk about. Uh, so much hopefully you, you have already enjoyed this and uh, we can't, Uh, wait to do part two and three so god bless you and take care we'll see you next time